developing the palate. Okay. That has a beautiful odor. The flavor is slightly sweet, slightly spicy. Just a little steam coming off of it. It's been warmed slightly. I'm either holding water or I'm holding a glass of sake and enjoying the wonderful qualities of it. There's a light acidity in the background of it, a slight tang to it. It's, it's nice, um, very pleasant quality to this particular one. And, um, but this is a beverage I've learned to enjoy a long time ago. As you saw from the title, this is about developing the palate. Look, <clears throat> when it comes to cooking, if you wanna be really good at cooking, okay, this is something that you need to know. You can study all the cookbooks under the, uh, under the sun. You can go to school, you can study, you can learn all the techniques, all the methods. You can learn everything there is to know about the mechanics of cooking. But you know what? If you don't know the flavors, you're not gonna be very good at what you do. You see, when it comes to cooking, in our society, we often put the cart before the horse. And what we do is we first learn about food with our eyes and then our nose, and then we taste it. And in essence, if you're gonna be a good chef, that's backward. You first need to learn about the taste, taste and texture, then the aroma, then appearance. And if you learn to do this in discovering flavors, then you're doing yourself a serious, serious favor, okay? Um, by not knowing your flavors, you're doing yourself an injustice. Some years back, a company put out a product where they mixed peanut butter and chocolate together in the form of a little uh, cup-shaped candy. And this product just went, well, these days we would call it going viral. Back then it sold like crazy, okay? It became very, very popular, and it's been popular ever since. But up until that point, nobody had really considered putting peanut butter and chocolate together. We would have thought, oh, I don't think I would want to try that. And people thought that because they didn't have a good sense of taste. A good chef gets to where they will know what something is going to taste like or approximately what it will taste like when it's finished. And that is because they've developed their sense of taste to the point that they understand how flavors interact with each other, how they're going to act with one another. And that's just part of experience, okay? It's just like painting, all right? You know, you can learn all of the strokes and all of the brushes to use and everything, but until you actually start working with what you're doing with your painting and on that canvas, you can't actually produce. And you have to know your colors in order to produce properly. You can't mix colors and blend and make your own colors without knowing your colors. And it's no different when it comes to cooking. You have to know your flavors. So let me give you an example. Here I have a bowl of some different vegetables. I have a white onion and a red onion and a shallot and garlic. These are all from the same family, but they don't all taste the same. Garlic doesn't taste like onion. It's the same family, but it doesn't taste the same. And the shallot doesn't taste like a red onion. All right, they look similar in some ways, but they don't taste the same. A leek doesn't taste like a small green onion, what we call a scallion. These are also part of the same family. Thing of it is, you have to understand your flavors if you're gonna know what's gonna work well with each other, okay? And that's part of being really good in the kitchen. We see this all the time in social media, on television. You know, you watch these cooking shows. Uh, many of us do, I'll admit that I do. Uh, and I have seen uh, several very popular and famous chefs 
do this same technique where they will blindfold people and blindfold taste test uh, or allow them to, to try foods blindfolded. And it's surprising how often people miss the mark. Uh, I've watched Chef Ramsey do this with young chefs that believe they're going someplace and, and think that they have a, a real handle on cooking. And then when he blind taste tests them, that turns out they don't know their flavors. And because they don't know their flavors, they won't be able to make good chefs until they do, all right? It doesn't mean there's no future there. It just means that some more training is needed. Now, how do I know what beef stock and onion are gonna taste like together unless I know what onion tastes like and what beef stock tastes like? Now, I know both and I know them well and I've made a lot of French onion soup and those two go together very well, all right? It's a blending of sweet and savory. And if you're thinking sweet, where's the sweet come in? Yeah, you have to prepare the onions the right way. And yes, there's a lot of sweet there. So what I've got in here is some chuck. And I have put some Worcestershire sauce in here, some salt balsamic vinegar in here, and I've also put some bourbon down in the bottom. And all of that's going to produce flavors for the gravy. Now here's the thing, if I didn't know what balsamic vinegar tasted like, then this would just be a shot in the dark. But it's not a shot in the dark because I know what it tastes like. And I know how it's gonna make my gravy, which I normally put Worcestershire sauce in, I know how it's gonna make it a little, a little sharper a little more bite to it on the back side and that bourbon gives it a woody side kind of a, a nice almost like this had been a smoked roast and then a gravy made over it so it, it's it's slightly woody on the flavor of the sauce the the gravy that i'm going to make after cooking it <clears throat> so i'm going to put garlic down in there because i know how the garlic's going to work and i know how much garlic because i know how strong garlic is you can't know your flavors without tasting them um onion i want to put some onion in there too i want to put the red onion in there because the red is going to work really really super well with the other flavors that i've got in here that bourbon and the balsamic vinegar is just going to pop with that red onion so good stuff much better than it would with the shallot or a white onion and I'm gonna do that because I know my flavors, folks. I know how they combine and how they work, especially on savory dishes like this. And that comes from 35 years of doing this, 35 years worth of different ways, okay? And I cook this dish easily five to eight times a year. So that gave me a lot of opportunities to try different things and to understand how those flavors interact and work with each other but I wouldn't have known to have tried balsamic vinegar in this in the first place if I didn't know what it tasted like. And you may have been wondering, you know, hey, I thought I was gonna learn about developing the palate and you're showing me a recipe. Well, this recipe is about that. It's about how those flavors interact and work with each other. But by themselves, they're all good, but if you know how to combine them, you get tremendous delicious food. So I'm gonna challenge you, try this. Try making what I'm making and taste it. See what you get. You might say, okay, how much balsamic did I use? Okay, simple enough. I used about two tablespoons of balsamic, about a quarter of a cup of Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna be putting four, actually, you could say three and a half cloves of garlic in there. I put about a third of a cup, or maybe slightly more, of bourbon. I'm gonna put this right in the bottom, in the liquid. I want to put this one red onion in there. You saw how much salt and pepper. They just need to be cut up. Now the onion I'm going to go right on top of the meat and that's because I want some of the onion's juices and acids to weep down through that meat. That's a good thing. And just enough water to bring the liquid up to at least halfway on the meat. All right. You can put a little more if you want. Remember, you're gonna get some, some evaporation, but also you'll get release of moisture from the meat itself. Okay, now let's take a look at a different scenario when it comes to knowing your ingredients. Let's say you're trying to pair a beverage with some snacks, all right? 
you want your friends to be impressed with you. You're going to pick out a beverage or two that will work well with this. So would it be the sake or would it be an ale? Okay, you've seen me this morning. I described the sake, it's light flavors, somewhat fruity and, and a little bit acidic. It's very desirable by itself. It's very nice. However, you go placing that with foods that are extremely salty and robust and fatty like what you see here, this gets lost in the flavor profile. But this being malty, rich, and full-bodied will work within the flavor profile. So if you're going to pick between these two, I believe that the beer is going to work better for you. This ale is going to be a much better flavor with these ingredients than a sake would be. And this is what I'm talking about. Learning and knowing your flavors, you won't know what to put with what unless you know your flavors. And it's the same way with pairing uh, ingredients to the right beverage. So folks, again, taste everything. When you understand your flavors, you can move forward in cooking. You can start inventing your own recipes and you can start changing or modifying existing recipes to suit your needs and that's when you're really moving forward. So what I would like to do here is to put forth a challenge. This is going to be the blind blindfold taste test challenge and I think that everybody should really get on board with this because this is this is just part of good times, it's good fun and it's a challenge that is not dangerous provided everybody's being honest on the up and up. We should break out some different foods, maybe some banana, carrot, pineapple, cucumber, a variety of different common fruits and vegetables. Cut them into nice square pieces and put them on a plate and have them covered and then numbered as well. So each item has to have a number and, it's, and what it is. And uh, so this person blindfold, uh, gets a blindfold put on, they get each item placed on their tongue, they get to taste it and chew it, swallow it if they wish, um, or spit it out, you know, depending, uh, somebody may not like the flavor of something. So that's all right. And the thing of it is, is that they need to be able to identify what those items are and see how many you can get out of 10. Can you get two, three? Can you get all 10? Folks, this, it sounds easy, but when it's put in practice, you're gonna find out you're gonna be challenged. Because remember, we identify foods in reverse. We identify them by our eyesight, and then by our smell, then by taste. And to reverse that order means that you really have to think about the taste and where did this come from. I watched, um, I think it was Ramsey doing this to one of his uh, young chefs on uh, I think it was Hell's Kitchen and he put some I think it was carrot in this person's mouth they identified it as apple and I was thinking okay a the texture is very different and B the flavor is not the same now look I can understand if somebody thinks that a piece of jicama is apple because it's got an apple like flavor and well the texture is like a dry apple so they just may think it's, it's just a dry apple um, jicama can be confused that way because of its similarity in flavor, but not a carrot. You shouldn't be that far off the mark, not anybody, all right? So the thing of it is, is do this, and then the other challenge is go to the store. If you haven't ever eaten it, buy it. Take it home, learn about it, you know, do a little study, learn what that fruit or vegetable is, and how it's normally prepared. Is it heated? Is it eaten raw? Do you eat the skin? Do you not? And, and it's smart to learn about this because you don't want to buy a, let's say, a, a mango or a papaya, <laughs> either one, and just take it home and bite into the skin because you're gonna get a really bad surprise. If you bite into those, they have a, um, a somewhat turpentine-like odor and flavor, and it's not appealing at all. The inside is what you eat, and you have to cut it open first. So you want to learn a, a few little things like that before you just go chomping down on something. But go, find what you haven't eaten, buy it, try it, 
and that way you grow your palate, make it stronger so you cook well. Folks, I guess that's what I have to say about training your palate. Um, please do this and please focus on what I just said and learn to appreciate everything that's around you. I can understand if you do not cook with alcohol, that's fine, but remember there are alternatives and when you put something that's alcoholic in food, and if you're going to heat it, you're going to cook the alcohol off in almost every circumstance. Only a few uh, recipes actually have alcohol in them after they're cooked, um, and that's very limited. Uh, most of those are actually desserts, believe it or not. The savory dishes are usually simmered for a long time, and that's all cooked out. But do not be afraid of trying things, unless, of course, you're allergic to something and find out what everything tastes like and what it feels like so you can discover true growth and a, a true open palate in the kitchen. Because when you get that part of it down, you're gonna be actually creating in your kitchen and you deserve the honor of that artistic expression. Thank you. Now, if you're still watching, hey, you're probably a subscriber or somebody that watches my whole video. Uh, I do appreciate that so much. If you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate you do that or consider that. Uh, take a look at the channel. I do tutorials and they are, some of them are long, but they're detailed and that's the whole idea behind it. I don't want people asking questions at the end of my video about how to do something. I don't like to see that in the uh, question or in the comments boxes. So I try to make them uh, complex enough and informative enough that that does not happen. I'm not always successful, but I try. Folks, thank you for watching this. If you enjoyed it, please click that like button. Um, I've started a Patreon page where I'm trying to fund my new photography business as well as this channel, which I'm going to be working side by side. They're going to be kind of a part of each other in a manner of speaking. Um, if you would take a look at that, that is patreon.com slash Stuart Trotter. Um, see right down here. Please take a look uh, and please take a look at my channel and please have a good day. Good eating. <laughs>